So what typically happens when an entrepreneur hits a roadblock? He finds a solution. In this case, a New Hampshire businessman, frustrated when his bank rejected his loan request, decided to open his own bank. Kayla Tausche has more from Bedford, New Hampshire. On a sleepy strip in Bedford, New Hampshire, there's a new building going up, and to many, it's a post-crisis milestone. It's among the first new banks in the country since the recession. Restaurateur Bill Greiner got the idea for Primary Bank after getting a notice from his previous bank, Citizens, it would not be renewing his commercial loan. Citizens was focusing on bigger loans, more than $20 million, not small business loans like Greiner's. But instead of going to another bank, Greiner went to his Rolodex and then to Washington. And the regulators were excited with the vision that I gave them, and the vision that I gave them was this would be a grassroots effort. It wasn't going to be five or ten of us, but I was hoping to get 50 people that would come together. That surprised them a little bit, and you could see a couple of them sit back in their chairs, and you know, one particular regulator had said they'd never seen that before, and what was I thinking? The result, 350 investors, some $30 million in startup capital, and one of the only charters awarded by the FDIC to new banks in the last five years. The only other bank that's opened its doors serves the Amish community in Pennsylvania. Demand both for loans themselves and banks to issue them had been pent up. More than 100 community banks started each year, on average, since 1980. But then in 2010, nothing. Low interest rates are partly to blame. But industry observers chalk it up to tough regulatory hurdles like costly compliance with Dodd-Frank for banks of a certain size, also a required seven-year business plan. They also want to make sure that management and the board have banking experience. Investors like Matt Cafori understood early on how imperative it is for a bank to not only meet but exceed Washington's expectations. I'm confident about, about the future of this bank because um, the, ground, the ground has been set. Um, we've been very particular about going to the FDIC, going to the banking regulatory committees and in, in getting everything, our I's dotted and our T's crossed. The idea in Bedford generated so much momentum, Griner's CEO found him. There certainly is a place for the larger bank, um, but for, um, for the smaller customer, I just continue to hear that they wanted more. They wanted something local. Um, and that, that's really what made my decision. 95% of the money behind primary has come from the state of New Hampshire, including backing from the state's former four-term governor. As big banks shrug off small towns, it's a model that many states and entrepreneurs could look to replicate. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Kayla Tausche, Bedford, New Hampshire.